Good morning, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. So happy to have some time with you this morning, this Friday morning, and um, grateful that we have an opportunity to be together thanks to YWTV. As you know, we've created this platform as an opportunity to educate us on important issues during this time that we're social distancing and to inspire us and to lift us, you know, through this time and uh, also to put the social back in social distancing, keep us connected. We are so grateful today to have Dr. Patty O'Brien Richardson with us this morning. Uh, we have a real treat for you. Um, she is a health and well-being strategist whose focus is faith, food, and fitness. What more could we ask for? Um, she is the CEO of Move It Nation, Inc., a nonprofit that focuses on health disparities affecting women and girls of color and she's the author of Purge It with Patty. So, um, you know, her book has helped hundreds transform their minds, their bodies, and their businesses by treating their body as a temple and not as a trash can. And um, they have been able to have clarity and live um, out their dreams and destiny and purpose. Um, she is also an associate professor at Rutgers University where she teaches public health leadership. Welcome to YWTV, Dr. Patty. Thank you for being with us today. Hi, Helen. It's a huge pleasure and honor. Thank you so much. So, um, you know, as happens when we set up these uh, times and plan events, um, you know, obviously we sometimes plan for them in advance and um, a lot happens from when we initially plan them. And although we planned a discussion, which uh, Dr. Patty and I will get to, we thought that it was important to uh, you know, discuss and raise and, you know, honor what's going on right now um, around us. Um, obviously, with the um, murder of George Floyd and the, um, you know, uh, uprising of, um, you know, just absolute, you know, horror with what's happened and um, our communities, you know, trying to make sense of it and, you know, uh, come together and, you know, let our government, you know, let everyone around us know that this is not okay. Um, but, you know, all of this, you know, is a lot and, you know, even in our discussion here does have an emotional toll um, and a, a different emotional toll on each of us. Obviously for black people, the toll is, you know, you, you live the experience, um, you know, for others of us, it's a different toll. Um, but, you know, the important thing, you know, is that we have resources and people like Dr. Patty, you know, to help us manage through this. You know, Dr. Patty, I know that uh, you shared um, through your social media um, that, you know, obviously a lot of people are protesting and, you know, trying to raise their voices, um, which, you know, is long overdue, um, you know, that uh, structural racism and racism is, you know, not okay. It needs to be dismantled immediately. And um, we all need to work together for that. But as we know, you know, we are obviously living in a time of COVID and, um, you know, it's not so easy for everyone to get out there and protest. I know I personally am, you know, caring for my 89 year old mother here. Um, so, you know, I can't be in a situation where I could bring home something to her. Um, so, if, you know, there are people also that are just, you know, emotionally can't get out there well mm -hmm. in terms of some of the physical considerations. Can you help us a little bit, you know, talk about, you know, what's going on and also how we can still feel like we're doing something and taking action during this time? Absolutely. And I just want to say thank you so much for having me and also for what the work that you do there, all of you, I have friends that are there at the YWCA, and I know that you believe in your motto is to eliminate racism and empower women. So thank you for that. So yes, um, I really believe in the marching. I believe in the protesting. Um, you know, there is civil disobedience opportunities there. I want to make sure that everyone listening understands that this isn't anything that is new not to belittle anything. I think in similar words, I've heard others say, it's just that now we're able to see it. It's really been there in every decade of the history of America, beginning with the history of America. And I know that I've been personally affected by um, you know, what's happening in terms of racial injustice and offenses by the police myself personally. 
And um, as a black woman married to a black man, and I have you know many of my close friends, my family members, it is a concern and it's a, it's a fear and it shouldn't be. And so I really believe in um, really protesting. I know my children have gone, they've marched, they're planning to go today, but it's not for everyone and not everyone can do it. You know, um, as you know, uh, my, my family has been affected by coronavirus. Um, my father passed away uh, it's two months now on the seventh, and my mom as well has been recovering. So someone like her who believes in this cause, someone with small children, for example, may not be able to go. And so recently on my post on um, I am Dr. Patty on Facebook and on um, Instagram, I posted 12 ways to be involved um, with the struggle beyond the streets, beyond actually marching, because this is important. And I also want to note that the looting is a huge concern. I was watching just the destruction of property, which is not right at all. And these are communities where people still have to get up and go to work. They still have to um, walk their children to the store. So there are ways to protest and not be um, destructive and not be violent. And the, one of the things I've seen is with many of my friends on social media, as you alluded to, that are involved um, out there, I'm now seeing many of them are emotionally exhausted, they're emotionally drained, they're taking a break from social media, rightly so. And I just want to be able to be there to be able to help them reset their minds, refuel, recharge, and to also be able to provide um, so, some resources so that we can really live out our purpose and do the work, the important work that we were put here to do. So I'm just gonna quickly share a few of those options. If you're listening, one thing that you can absolutely do is pray, regardless of what faith you are in. You know, you are. it's very important for us to believe in a higher power. I know for me, it's God, and this is where the faith connects to the fitness. So that is one thing that I believe in praying. Um, the other thing you can do is vote. I know that there are prim primaries that are happening all over the country right now. I know recently in Baltimore, I know for New, New Jersey, it's on the 23rd of June. And so that is important also. I think for, um, for most of my other friends, it's also really important, and I appreciate that they've shared about this, is to reflect on their own privilege. This is an incredible time to have a time of reflection and to really see areas that you can also speak up when you witness injustice. That is extremely important. And that's something that anyone and everyone can do. Um, I know there was a, a situation um, that my husband was telling me of two sisters, one was white and one was black, and they went to a supermarket and the first one was white and she used uh, a credit card and she was able to go through through the cashier. The second one was black. And even though they were sisters, the second one was asked for her ID. And so that was a concern of, well, why, why was my sister able to go through and not me? Those types of things happen every single day. And so really it's about speaking up when you see injustice. Um, also, there are many, many, many organizations that are involved right now. Um, you can definitely count on that. There are large, lots of nonprofit organizations. I know that even some of the attorneys that are supporting these families, they have funds, um, funding or opportunities available for you to be able to donate to the legal services for these families. And I think in, in many ways, that's important. It's really important to be able to be involved in justice work. Um, you can fundraise. You can fundraise. There are lots of GoFundMe's that you need to find out about more about the organizations. But definitely do some research. Look into the groups that are really powerfully leading the charge and seeing what you can do to help and support these organizations that are supporting policy, that are supporting um, social justice, education. Another thing, speaking as an educator, one thing that we can really do is really support students. You know, I'm a proud educator at Rutgers University and I'm very proud to be uh, teaching seniors. I, I just really am amazed at how resilient our seniors are from high school, anyone that's graduating. They, have, they are just a different breed. They have come through quite a bit of fire for the year. And I think one thing we can do is to encourage and empower our students. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we are using racial justice tools, uh, cultural uh, humility, really practicing um, diversity in the classroom and really looking at ways that we can empower these young voices, even in choosing the texts that we choose to read. 
and we use we choose to um, have the students read in the classroom. Those are some ways that we can encourage. Um, and then I think lastly, we can also what what I'm trying to do is create and what you are doing as well is creating a healing space online, a space to talk about these things, a space to ask these types of questions and to get knowledge and to get educated on ways that we can improve our um, lens when it comes to racial injustice. Well, I'm so grateful that you shared that list because there's really something for everyone and anyone, you know, to do, um, you know, in our community to be able to uh, feel empowered. And, you know, as you said, you know, marching is important. I've done it, you know, you've done it, but it may not be something you can do right now for whatever reason, but this still gives you plenty of options to move forward. So, um, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, the loss that you have experienced experience through the coronavirus and my sympathies, of course, to you and your family. Um, and obviously, we know that many of our viewers have been also dealing with their tremendous amount of loss during this time. Um, one of the things that you've done through your social media is creating a hashtag called lower the underlying um, and, you know, to address underlying conditions affecting communities of color. Can you talk to us a little bit about what inspired you, obviously, to do that and to kind of take your grief and, you know, move it forward in that way and how, you know, it's made an impact? Mm -hmm. Sure, Helen. So it is hard to ignore when you look at the data that as the numbers of victims of coronavirus, as they rise, it's hard to ignore the fact that many of those numbers are people of color, specifically Black and Latino communities. And so it does make you question why. And there are many, many reasons why. Um, a lot of it stems from structural violence and social injustice for decades. Um, for example, zip code as a social determinant of health, based on where you live, that can determine the type of access to health that you have, the type of school your child will be able to go to, the type of food that you can eat if you don't have access to public transportation, the ability to run. I went for a jog this morning and I felt fine in my community, but not everyone feels safe in their community. Not everyone is able to exercise and feel safe outside. There may not be bike paths. They may not be lit walkways. So there are so many reasons for the reasons we have um, underlying conditions, which are obesity, diabetes, heart disease, so many others, um, especially high blood pressure as well. And so you find that in many communities, but particularly in black communities, you find many of those that are there that have underlying conditions. And so, as I said before, structural violence, if you are unable to feed your, ch your child with healthy food, if you're unable to have access to the to the hospital, if you're unable to get fresh vegetables and exercise, definitely you will end up with diabetes. You'll end up with if everything around you is, um, you know, fried chicken and supermarkets. So that's an issue. And not only that, but the stress of racism. There are now studies that show racism increases stress. And so, and as we know, stress exacerbates diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so you find that in black communities, particularly you have uh, these underlying conditions. And so I wanted to create awareness to really help people to identify what are some basic baby steps, just starting at the very beginning. What are some things that we can do to lower the underlying? Because to be honest with you, Helen, when I look at the numbers of the coronavirus victims, when I see that number rising, I see my father in that number. You know, I see family members in that number. I see friends, my friends that I have all over the world, their parents or their mother or father or uncle or cousin or coworker in that number. And many of them are people of color. And so the issues around structural violence and social injustice, it won't change tomorrow. You know, we're, we're, we're fighting right now, we're, we're marching, we're hopefully registering to vote to change some of these policies, but these things are not gonna change overnight. But what we can do is we can get up and walk, we can get up and grab a buddy and, and safely walk social distance. We can wear our mask. We can um, perhaps choose to eat differently. So those are the things that we can do. And so those are the that's the initiative that I'm trying to bring across with the hashtag. It's my hope 
that when someone searches for hashtag lower the underlying, they will see many different options for ways that they themselves can start to lower the underlying by just making small choices that will lead to big benefits in the end. That's wonderful. So for our, um, all of you know everybody watching, obviously we have uh, posted uh, up here Dr. Patty's uh, social media sites so that you can connect to her. But once you get on there, definitely keep searching her hashtag as well so that you can get some of these wonderful tips that she's um, putting out there. Uh, it sounds like they're, they're all concrete steps that you know we can each take to make a difference and especially in black communities and communities of color where it's most uh, needed for sure with the numbers as we know them to be so let's talk a little bit about faith and hope and gratitude right i know that this is a staple and the core you know of your work um you know tell us a little bit about you know putting energy into that space and how it does impact our health well, you know, faith is the beginning of everything, right? You know, and the definition of faith is believing in what you don't see. And whether someone believes in God or doesn't, we all have faith. I mean, we believe that the sun will rise again. We believe that when we switch on the light, it's going to come up. You know, we believe that, um, you know, we're, this too will pass. And so I really believe that faith is the beginning of everything. And so you, when you approach your own personal health, it does involve faith. You have to have a belief that in something bigger than you, for me, that's God, but I know that for many, it's God. And so really also that needs to translate into the fact that no one is here by accident. You and I are here with a purpose. There's a reason that we're here. And so I call that our purpose. I call that our assignment. And so really, I believe that everyone is here with a purpose, with an assignment. And our job is to find that purpose, find that assignment. I believe that my assignment is to really help women, mostly women, most of my clients are uh, women and women of faith, to really help them to purge their body, make their body a temple, really see that that is the purpose of our bodies, is to be as the best that we can be. And the reason that we need to do that is so that we can fulfill our purpose. We even, even taking the marching and the voting, we won't be able to impact policy if we are not taking care of ourselves. We won't be able to change the outlook of the future for our children if we're not able to care for ourselves and be better. And so I really believe that the beginning of it all is caring for ourselves. It is being grateful for our bodies and being thankful that we do have these bodies, no matter what condition it's in, and showing our gratitude by taking care of it. So if we, if we can get there, if we could start with ourselves and, and um, you know, start to show gratitude and self-care and take care of ourselves, um, how do we get the rest of our families along for the ride? How can we engage them so that it, it really is something that, you know, we can, you know, instill in the generations after us and hopefully bring along those ahead of us? So that's the challenge, right? I know that that's the challenge for me. So I have four children and two bonus children. So myself, I have um, and I have a soon to be 20 year old and I have triplets that are 17. And so um, it's tough. It's not easy. I'm going to tell you. And, and I remember when they were little, I had it hard when they were little. It was very, 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 very difficult because for a long time, I was actually a single mom of four. And so, and they were little. They were like five. My triplets were five and my oldest was eight. Yeah. But the way, to, so I understand the, the whole life course um, as I have now, you know, one in college. I would say that there, it, there isn't a silver bullet. It is not easy, but you can start by being an example. That's the first place we can start. We can start by being an example. I think another area that what we can do is we need to involve our children in our lives and not just go shopping and not just go and cook and present this incredible meal, but really involve them in every step of the way. From reading the ingredients, having small discussions, really looking at every opportunity as a teachable moment, really by getting them involved in the kitchen, helping them to cook. You know, one, one of my um, bonus daughters, she was able to create this beautiful menu and every day of the week, one of our five daughters, they, they cook. 
And it's great. I don't cook anymore. And so they are now doing the cooking. And it's great to just have those types of discussions. I think another thing you can do with the older kids, because let's face it, it's easy with the little ones. They just want to be with you sometimes. The older ones, it's harder. They have their own lives. They are now home. They have school. They have projects. So I would say with the older ones, you really have to get creative. One of the things we've done is I call it vitamin ICU. And so around, let's say lunchtime or maybe a little after, because now that everyone's home, my kids get up pretty late. So I would say literally around maybe one o'clock, I will call all of them from wherever corners of the house they are to let's congregate there in the dining room and let's have a minute of vitamin C. So I call it vitamin ICU. So I want to have FaceTime with them because, you know, these older ones, they can just stay in the room all day with yeah. their doors closed and they don't have to see anybody because they have their phones, they have their computers, they're working on their homework, their assignments. And so it's a great time to just pull them out of their corners of the house, my husband included, for us to see each other and just have FaceTime and talk about our morning the way we would if we were at work and we were having lunchtime with our colleagues. And just to have an I see you moment, but also while we're opening up a, t a tangerine or sharing a glass of orange juice or making some orange, some fresh squeezed orange juice or having an orange or peeling an orange. And so it's a way that I can just get actual vitamin C in their bodies. And so that's one thing that we do with the, with the older ones. Another quick thing that we do is we've made dinner time fun. We actually have this fun, fun game. We, we've made it up. We call it the question of the day. And so the question of the day is just really something fun. And then everybody goes around and shares. I found these on Pinterest. You can look up, um, would you rather questions or, you know, that game, what, what would you rather yeah. or questions around um, family dinner questions. And so one question that's super popular, you can, your listeners can do mm -hmm. tonight is after this coronavirus is over, what's the first place, what's the first thing you want to do? Or who's the first place and you, who's the first person you want to see? Or where's the first place you want to go? Those kinds of questions. Yeah. And so it's got to the point where the, the kids want to, they really want to be a part of it. And so they, I have some of them coming up with questions because sometimes they're like, oh, I don't like that question, mom. That question was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> so it's a great way because they know that I'm going to come with a new question. And so um, that's another thing that you can do to just make dinner time fun and pull everyone out of the house and have them stay long enough to have those really healthy meals that they cooked they themselves made and so they're really proud like so whenever someone comes to the table before we get started we go okay guys let's give a hand for kamali or whoever you know jasmine or whoever it was that cooked and so they feel a sense of oh wow this is great so i think that those are things that you can do with kids at any age that those are those are great um great great tips and uh i you know i have uh, i was just gonna say i i i bow down to you with triplets because i have twins so I, I know how much twins were, and uh, I can only imagine what that extra <laughs> baby was like to deal with, you know, to raise together. But, um, you know, th these are great opportunities, no matter what age they're at, um, to be able to stay connected to them and, uh, you know, plant the seeds for the future, you know, so that, you know, you know, as you said, you know, you're, you're, they can take that to their families then as they get older as well. So obviously you know especially now with covid and so much that's happening around us you know immunity and staying healthy you know is key is really really key can you give us some ideas about um, immune boosting foods and you know ways that we can you know just keep ourselves strong in that way absolutely you know obviously there's some really great benefits to vitamin c um, as I said, you can do your vitamin ICU and pull, to pull everybody out of their corners. But I think also, you know, vitamin C is hidden in many different foods like spinach and tomatoes and even in um, different vegetables. You know, I really love to mix it up, but not just vitamin C. We can also really benefit from lemons in the morning. We can also really benefit from pineapples. And I really encourage, I even have it right here, lemon, uh, warm water and lemon. That is very important. I have my mom um, doing that to boost her immunity um, after her bout with coronavirus. That's one thing that she does all the time is she just has her warm, she starts her day with warm water and lemon. I think there are other things that you can do really including berries. Um, you know, there's so much out there for little children that you can find. And, but also I, I want to encourage all of your listeners to 
to be sure to um, really make sure that they are looking into zinc because mm -hmm. it's not easy to find in the stores. That's one thing I want to mention. It's not easy to find, but you can find it in chickpeas. You can find it in beans. You can find it in nuts. You can find it in lentils. So that's important. Um, another immune boosting um, uh, element is beta carotene. And it's, it's really easy because pretty much many orange foods have it. Carrots, um, you could find them in uh, kale, spinach, cantaloupes, those types of things. So it's really important for us to not just go shopping with the things that we may have um, run out of, but it's important that we really are intentional in what we bring into the house. And also safe and making sure we're wiping it down and we're scrubbing it down as well. But those are some things. Um, also, we will also wanna make sure that we're encouraging our children to snack healthy. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to um, really make sure that you have some nuts if you're not allergic to nuts, seeds, also um, lots of different fruits. Bulk up on the berries, strawberries especially. And I think a great way to squeeze it in is in salads. You know, you can put salads in just about anything. Mm. Uh, you can put anything in, in, in salads. You can just put anything. A salad can be whatever you have left over in the house. So, and, and, you know, so that's something that I would say. So, you know, you're giving so many great ideas um, about ways to kind of put the right stuff in our bodies. And, you know, they all sound tasty and good to me. Um, but, you know, very often we have a friend or a family member that has an immune issue. And, you know, we know that, but we're watching them not take care of themselves and we're watching them, you know, not eat the right things or do the right things. What are some ways that we can be um, supportive and try to help facilitate them taking better care of themselves, especially at this time? You know, and I, I can only, you know, say sometimes with, you know, um, I found it with my dad before he passed and, you know, now with my mom, you know, they know better, right? Anything that I would tell them, they know better. <laughs> You know, because, yeah. you know, but, you know, you, 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 you know, you know, different information now. We know different information now from when they grew up, you know, and what they were exposed to. And, you know, we want them to be around and stay strong and healthy. Yeah, it's hard. You know, that's another thing where there isn't a silver bullet there. It's hard. I went through the same thing with my parents. I think for those of you that are out there listening that are in the same age range, we're in that, what do they call it? The sandwich yeah. generation. Yeah. Yes. So we are taking care of our kids, but then we also have our parents that we're taking care of. So we're sort of in the middle of it all. And so one thing I think would, would really be helpful is to really, you have to figure out what makes your loved one, if that's what it is, tick. Where are they motivated? You know, what, what would motivate them? I know for my parents, it's the grandkids. They are motivated by the grandkids. And so they may not listen to me, but they'll listen to their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you have to do, you have to use them. You need to find out what, what is it about them? I, you know, when my dad was alive, he would swear by um, the news. You know, he was a big news watcher. The news was on in our house all the time, um, usually uh, ABC News. And so if he found out about something or maybe it was related to a, a data or research article or a journal article or something that was published, that became the law. And so if you know that your um, loved one, parent, auntie, uncle, or spouse is motivated by news, then bring home some data around healthier habits, bring home some um, articles, have them listen to podcasts perhaps that are centered around healthier eating. I think, you know, it's it's not just about healthy eating. It's it's really the bigger piece is taking care of our temple. We even have we that's our actual slogan. It's it's called yes. my body is a temple, not a trash can. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's our slogan for those of us that are purging, um, meaning, you know, really cleaning out our bodies and not just resetting our bodies, but our minds. And so it, we have to grow from just eating healthy or eating clean to getting deeper and involving our faith, something that will not be moved. I think if we really connect the dots there, then we'll want to be better. We just won't want to lose five pounds, but we'll want to be better so that we can fulfill our purpose. We will want to be better so we can fulfill our assignment on earth. You know, we'll want to be better so we can be a better mom or be a better wife or be a better friend and just be better for, for our lives. 
So I, I really I really focus on helping people take it much deeper than I want to lose weight, but really get to the deeper roots of I just want to be better so I can be better for my purpose. Whatever that is, whatever you see your purpose as, we won't be able to make a, as much of an impact in that purpose if we're not taking care of ourselves. So I think it's really communicating that to our loved ones and letting them know how important they are, they are and what their purpose means to you and really communicating that to them. And that needs to be the reason why. Well, I have one more quick question for you because uh, just appreciative of all you've shared. And it's just, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to talk to so many small business owners, so many women, small business owners, just because of my job, but in the last few months as well. And, um, you know, I, I love the fact that you were inspired to write your book. Um, and I was curious, just in case other people are walking around with an idea, you know, how did you take that idea and bring it all the way through to, you know, being published and being on the circuit and talking about it? You know, how did you, how did you develop that or, or get yourself to saying, okay, I'm actually going to make this a book? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I definitely want to point back to my faith. <laughs> no, nothing happens to me without that. But, you know, I think it really goes back to my story. You know, um, when I was a, a divorced mom, a single mom of four, I, um, I was teaching a fitness class. And then I went from teaching one fitness class to having to put food on the table, right? So I went from teaching one fitness class to about four fitness classes. And I was teaching several classes. And eventually I thought I need to have one place where I can have all of my classes. And also so my children can be with me and have kids classes. So I was very fortunate. I eventually opened up my own studio in Quincy, Massachusetts. It was called Move It Studio. And so I was just doing it and it was business was doing great. And because I was burning a lot of calories, I really felt I could eat anything. You know, I was just eating whatever I wanted to because I knew in my class you could burn 700 calories, 800 calories. So I wasn't taking care of myself. My, my nonprofit was called Move It Nation. It's still called Move It Nation. My studio was called Move It Studio. Everything was move it, move it, move it. Physical activity, go, 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 burn these calories, but nothing about food. And I had an aha moment. My aha moment was when I was completely exhausted. I could not get out of bed. I remember the triplets having to push me, to turn me over, just to flip me on the other side because I was just so wiped out. And then I was later diagnosed with thyroid disease. They found a lump in my thyroid. And then I was also diagnosed with a lump in my in my left breast, which they later found both of them to be benign. But that made me stop in my tracks. Because even though I was a health and wellness person, even though I was a health and wellness provider and I was moving, moving and really doing a lot with fitness, because I felt like, oh, I could burn these calories. I, I could just eat whatever. I can have a hot dog. I can have chips with, with cheese, nachos with melted cheese on top. I can have pizza for breakfast and just do whatever because I'm going to burn it today in class. I didn't realize that it's not just fitness, but it's also food. Mm -hmm. I also need to focus on that. And so really, to be honest with you, that is what pushed it out of me because I realized that my clients were not getting the full picture of health. They were just getting move it, move it, move it, but they weren't getting the full balance, mm -hmm. which is food is equally, if not more important than our fitness. And so that's why it all goes together. So to be honest with you, that my story is what really pushed it out of me. And when I started writing it, it actually was a Facebook group at first. I had about close to 50 of my um, colleagues and just people that I found on Facebook. I said, okay, I'm doing, I'm writing, uh, I'm putting together a plan of, of nutrition and I'm looking for um, people who would like to take part of it and give me your feedback. I, I started, I think wearing my, I was doing my dissertation at the time. So wearing my research hat, mm -hmm. I wanted to get feedback. I wanted to get um, input. And I think that's another place to, to, to go. So you first have to have a story that compels you. You have to have a story that pushes you. Um, and so then once you have your story and once you're really focused and your passion is what's fueling you, because you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs. You need a community. You need friends. You need people who, what I call in my classroom, a critical friend someone that will tell you honestly, this is great or this doesn't need to happen. And so after six months of working with me, this group said, oh, I don't wanna know like all the different parts of a protein and the molecules and all that. I, just tell me what to eat, Patty. 
They basically said, just, just tell me what to eat. I just want to know what to eat. And so that was really pretty much the result. And what came up was the book. Because I, I always tell people the book is not what I wanted. What I wanted was like, a, you know, my dissertation was 340 pages. So I wanted this big, juicy book with like chapters and diagrams. And I get excited about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But what I found was that people just, the people in my focus group, they just really want to know what to eat. We are a simple people, you know, we just, we just, you know, we've gone from like long emails to just, you know, Twitter, like 140 ca characters. We just want to know, tell me what to eat, tell me what to drink. And so the, the book was born. That's amazing. Well, I have to say everything you shared, you know, all the way through to that last piece, you know, speaks to me that you have living your calling in every way and that and clearly your faith has helped bring you, you know, to this place and I'm grateful for all of us that we get to benefit, um, you know, uh, having your book and having you as a resource. I do encourage everybody watching to, again, follow uh, Dr. Patty on her social media outlet so you can learn more about, um, you know, her work and, um, you know, she'll keep you connected on, you know, especially during this time, things that you can be doing other than marching, mm -hmm. you know, ways that you can stay engaged as we started our, this conversation. Um, and obviously she'll have plenty of great, you know, health and wellness tips for you as well. Dr. Patty, thank you so much for spending this time with us. We're so grateful and, um, you know, keep it up, <laughs> keep evolving and keep sharing because you're, you're clearly making a, a big impact on all of us around. Thank you so much, Helen. And thank you for the work that you do and you and your, your colleagues on eliminating racism and empowering women. Thank you so much. Well, we have, a, we have a great team. We have a lot of work to do, so we need everyone to join us. Um, we hope everyone has a restful weekend. Dr. Patty gave you lots of great tips of things that you can be doing to, uh, you know, replenish as Dr. Thorpe started our week. Uh, Dr. Christine Thorpe, uh, you know, shared with us. She started our week mm -hmm. with how to replenish. Um, uh, Dr. Patty gave us lots of great ideas on, you know, how to do that. We hope that you take some time for yourself, make some time for yourself. And, um, you know, in that, as Dr. Patty said, the others around you will see and you will be their model and their guide. So we wish everyone well. Mind your minds. Check on the people around you. Take care of yourself. Uh, enjoy, hopefully, some disconnecting over the next two days. Um, we'll be back next week. We have a whole wonderful series of YWTB episodes for you with lots of lots more education and inspiration to get us through each day. So uh, be well, take care, and see you soon. Thank you again, Dr. Patty. Bye-bye.